guys, and welcome to episode 2 of Football Manager 10 and 15, Awakening the Italians with AC Milan. We're back on the 31st of August 2014 for the first game of our first season in charge away at Empoli. Um, who are a newly promoted side, I believe, from the Serie B. Um, yeah, they finished second last year in the Serie B. They've a handy enough little team, I think, but it's a game we should win, uh, I'd say. Now, since last time, eh, we've had to kind of go through pre-season and uh, make a few transfers, of which there were a few. So let's uh, have a braze through them. Uh, two on the ins. A uh, fair few going out. Uh, a lot on loans. And by Niang, probably the the biggest of the loans. He, we let him go out to Deportivo. You might think, oh, why didn't you keep Niang? Uh, but I think he just he needs a bit of first team football uh, just to enhance his ability a little bit before we throw him in. Uh, one of the two uh, guys we did sell was Christian Saccardo. He's gone to Verona for um, 165k. Yeah. He just wasn't, well, he wasn't very good, really. Um, and he was on a fair fair bit of money. He's actually taken a substantial pay cut to go to Verona. Um, I did say I might sell him in the last episode, and I went on to do so. The, uh, the other guy going out was Philippe Mexas for 375k. Uh, he's been a great servant to Italian football, but he, he was on 115 grand a week. And his contract was ending at the end of this season. And really, I, I'm not going to renew it. I wasn't going to renew it, so I decided I could kind of kill two birds with one stone and kind of get rid of him now, so he's he's a bit on on the wages. Plus, um, plus, I won't have to let him go on a free. I did get a bit of money for him. Like He's a decent player, but I think we had to cash in while we had the chance. Uh, we've had a, f a load of guys go, or four guys go on loan to Benevento, our uh, feeder club in the Italian Serie C. So that would include and Alessandro Livieri, uh, Stefano Aolfi, Ivan De Santas, and David Masiero. None of them looking great. David De Malfetta went out on loan. Calab Calabria went on loan to FC. Michelin, he's probably our best guy going out on loan, apart from Niang. Gamara Ruiz and Modic all going out on loans. So really the only two to look out for there is really Niang and Calabria. On the ins, two, two players, one uh, fairly common by early on football manager this year is Christopher Azure or Azure. Uh, you can pick him up on a free transfer from start over in the Norwegian Premier Division. Uh, he's a cracking player. He's a six, 16 year old, but he's a cracking player for, for for a free transfer. You know, he's improving quite quite nicely as well. Uh, so far, he, he's not the quickest guy. That's something we'll have to definitely look into. But he's definitely a guy with plenty of potential. Chuck him in the under twenties for now, and hopefully he can rise, to become a good player at some stage. And I suppose the bigger uh, high profile signing was Ezekiel Munoz for six million uh, from Palermo. I was trying to stray away from kind of generic transfers and possibly ones I did get at Villa, even though I, like, I suppose if Balanta, like in the Villa one, if Balanta shows himself up at the start of the second season and is available for only four million or something, you kind of have to take it. But I didn't want to kind of go and just buy somebody like him immediately. I wanted to put a little more thought process into it. And pick a guy who's got a bit of Serie A experience with Palermo. He's four or five seasons in now. Um, he looks a very solid centre-back. Argentinian. Uh, not fully capped, but has played once for their under-20s. He just looks a solid enough defender. Like He's our fourth best, according to the ratings. Um, we did need it to bring in that kind of extra defender, though, with both the guys going out, uh, Zaccardo and Mexus, both centre-backs. We kind of had to strengthen it, and we did decide to bring in Munoz. Anyway, into pre-season. It was not the best pre-season I've ever had. We drew 0-0 away at Rahahan. Beat Fulad 2-1, Pazini and Bonaventura. We beat Esteglal 1-0, al Shawari. Uh, beat Malavan 1-0, al Shawari. Beat Fulad and Antaz 2-0. 
Adil Rami and Kazuki Honda for losing to Juve 1-0 in a friendly. Um, Juve are really going to be a thorn in our side for years to come, I'd say, because their team, I think, is just so much better than everybody else's uh, in this league. You know, people like our Arturo Vidal, Paul Pogba. Like, Vidal's a defensive midfielder. He's got 16 finishing. Like, fuck's sake. Carlos Tevez, of course, uh, and it's not really an old squad either, you know, it's fairly balanced, I'd say, like, it, it's on the old side, but there's still some young enough guys in there, including my man, Roberto Pereira, Villa legend. Anyway, we might as well head into the game for today's episode, away at Empoli. Um team we've gone for is Diego Lopez and go back for Albert Albertazzi. He's only playing because um what's his name is injured. Who am I trying to think of? Pablo Romero, sorry, is suspended. And Descliglio is playing at right back. So Albertazzi, Alex, Rami, and Descliglio, De Young, Polly, Honda, Menez, El Shuari, and Torres gets the nod up front. Ahead of Pazzini, which I suppose is a risky enough move. Got good players on the bench, like Bonaventura, Minaz, Pazzini, Agassi, um, to name a few, Michael Essien. He might be injured, actually, Essien. I'm not sure whether we have him for today's fixture. Um, no, there he is. Um, no, it's Montari who we don't have. He's suspended also. They're playing a very narrow formation, which would uh, actually encourage me to tell the boys to change up our current instructions and just exploit the flanks a little bit more. I'm going to get Menez and El Shawari to really exploit the gaps that they they might have um, on the on the wings because they've such a narrow formation. They've quite a narrow little pitch as well. It's, as pitches go, it's pretty small. Um, and we'll get this season underway here at Empoli. Like, hopefully you're looking at coming out of this game with a win. Um, that's that's ideal. Oh, that would be ideal. Um, this game is going quite slow. I'm not sure whether that's lag or whether... No, just lagging, I think, a little bit. Because uh, it's going quite slowly here. That's how I'm usually going to get can kind of speed through. Um, the long and the short of it is nothing really is happening. Like That's the first really noticeable thing to happen in the 17th minute is a yellow card for one of their players. It is Torres. To Skiglio with a poor, poor ball in. Uh, Rami and Vecino. Uh, Ashwari looking for it. Can't find him. Fernando Torres. I suppose that was a clear-cut chance. Uh, Seppi with a decent enough save. Torres. Shows good instinct to get get into the position, but poor enough finish to not put that one home. Um, still nil nil here. Been a fairly woeful first half so far. Just that little kind of snapshot from Fernando Torres. Uh, the only thing that has occurred so far, really, is the odd yellow guard here and there, but. It has been uneventful, which makes it even more painful that it's taken quite a while to get through the half. Sometimes when it's just poor, it just goes straight through to half time, pretty much. Here's Alex finds Polly, though. No, can't quite find El Shawari. Here's Vecino. Signorelli, Moro, Larini, Vecino, Moro, Larini. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Diego Lopez has scored an own goal already. And we don't have any replays on, which isn't great. I don't think we want to see a replay of that goal, to be honest. And we are 1 0 down at half time. And been pretty well, so we're not going to exploit the flanks. And this time around, we're going to go much higher tempo. And try and. I suppose just bomb, bomb, bomb in cause we might go a bit more direct as the game goes on. Like as you can see from the stats, like we don't deserve to be one 0 down, but 
They got a lucky break, and we do find ourselves 1-0 now. And now Jeremy Menez is injured. So this is kind of going from bad to worse. Uh, going to bring on Marco Van Ginkel on the right-hand side. For Menez, see if he can do anything here. And here it finds Torres, De Jong, Honda, Albert Tassi, El Shawari, and it's a good save. Better play from ourselves, though. Creating something. Um, there's an Aragon Seppi. Siglio as well. Van Ginkel. Van Ginkel. Going all the way. Finds Fernando Torres. The two Chelsea mans. Chelsea men even. Combining. Van Ginkel on the right. Swings it in. And Torres makes no mistake this time round at the front post. And it is one apiece. Uh, but we haven't really kicked on. I would I was hoping maybe that that goal might kick us on, but it hasn't done so really. Ashwari hasn't played very well. We're going to take him off. Um, only 6.7 for him, and he's also quite tired. Hmm. What else could we do? Bring on. We don't really have those. Any more kind of impact players to put on in midfield? Um, we've got a defensive-minded midfielders. You know, we've got the likes of De Jong, Essi, and Montari. All very anchorman material, not advanced playmaker material. So really, kind of puts a lot of pressure on somebody like Honda to actually create. And when he's not going to create, we might be struggling for a goal or two this year. It looks like that's going to be the case today, unless we can sneak a last gasp one. Oh, we nearly could there, actually, but scrambled away. It does look like this first game of the season is going to end in a one-all draw, which is disappointing, but I suppose you've got to get on with things. Uh, they're not quite used to the tactic quite yet. Um as I was saying before, you know, you're we're really relying on somebody like Honda to play better than he did today, him and Andrea Polly. Um, like it's an okay result, I suppose. It'll do. At least it's not a defeat. And also Torres did manage to score a goal, which is decent. So not the best start to the season, but definitely not the worst either. Next Love Country will be the Roma game. I'm planning in this series to actually do it more on um, kind of big games. So you'll be seeing kind of games against Roma, Juve, Inter, you know, that sort of way, rather than just the generic one I use in the villa, which is going to every two months or every month, something like that. So it's, it might be a bit more concise and a bit more in-depth. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video for the new series, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. I'll see you guys later.